yo, 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 what's up, what's up? The podcast is ready, I think. <laughs> we think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> it might be ready. It might be. It might be. Uh, oh, boy. Happy Tuesday, everybody. Happy I hereby Tuesday. declare Tuesday as Curse Tech Day. <laughs> Curse Tech Tuesday. Curse Tech Tuesday. Every Tuesday, I swear I'm about to drop kick a computer <laughs> out of this fucking garage. <clears throat> Woo! Garage added. <laughs> computer, stop eavesdropping. Can you, could you do that? For us, please. Could you do that? Uh, so, um, hi everybody. Hello. We have a we have a day today. We have a day. I'm gonna be doing my best to make sure everything's up and running. Yesterday, everything worked great. I spent all day Saturday reinstalling Windows, relinking all of our programs. Uh. Man, and I was like, this machine is a beast. We're running at 25 Hell to 30 yeah. percent CPU max. <laughs> everything's running great. Yesterday was awesome. Uh, we didn't have any tech issues. There was just a couple things that didn't line up on screen every once in a while because yeah. I had rebuilt everything over right. the weekend, literally everything. Uh, and yesterday worked great. No tech tech issues at all. Mm -hmm. I reboot the computer this morning, open up live stream, and all of a sudden I'm like, wait, why is the video in our graphics layer dun, choppy? Dun, dun. Well, that's weird. Yeah. Huh. That doesn't happen often. That doesn't happen. Well, 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 I've never well, seen that weird. before. That's really strange. Okay. All right. Well, maybe it's just the the video. Yeah. I'll uh, I'll reimport the video. Huh? No, still <laughs> weird. <laughs> still choppy. Okay. Well, maybe I'll just make. Uh, maybe it's a problem with that graphics layer because there's about six right. things in that one layer. So I'll just delete the whole thing and then I'll play just the video, and then I'll know whether or not it's the layer or the video. Mm -hmm. So I do that process of illumination, and uh, it's still choppy. But if I just click, so here's the thing with live stream. Um, you input sources, and these sources are all individual kind of like inputs in a row, in a chain. And then you have three graphic layers. So technically, what you see on top right here is graphics layer one. What you see on bottom is graphics layer two. On our in-between screens, where we have the clips with the schedule and everything, that's graphics layer three. There's only three layers. Mm -hmm. But you can build things on top of each other within each layer. So you take one of your inputs, you put it into a graphics layer, which is our video of clips. So if I played the clips as an input directly through our preview and program output, it played fine. No problems at all. So I was like, well, it can't be the video then. Yeah. But if I put that video into the graphics player or graphics layer and then played it, it wouldn't run. And I've never seen that before with this software. So I was like, shit, maybe the software got corrupted. I'll uninstall and I'll reinstall. So I installed a new version of the software. And when I first opened it up, I was like, okay, it's working. All right, <coughs> that did it. But that means I can't open up our past project because it's a new version. Yeah. I'm going to have to spend all morning rebuilding everything. And each time I rebuild one of these projects, uh, you know, it takes me a couple hours minimum. It's like, all right, well, I'll just get to it. I'll start rebuilding. And I was going to have Lucas... Skype or uh, RTMP into me and everything was working fine. And then I just kept building and building. And then all of a sudden I realized, wait, why, how come the timer on the graphics layer says 1044 when it's 1047? That means this layer froze three minutes ago. What was I doing three minutes ago that made it freeze? I was just building out the project. So now I'm like, okay, well, something in this project is causing this to fall apart. Yeah. That's what the issue is. You guys are going on a whole journey with me right now. Uh, <laughs> so I had to call Lucas and say, go live direct to Twitch. I've got to figure this out because uh, something's causing the project to break apart in the graphics layers. So I start over from scratch again, and I keep an eye on that layer's clock, which is kind of nice that I have a timer on that layer because I could keep in, like, as I'm going, the mm -hmm. second I see the timer stop, it kind of lets me know, all right, that's what I just did that made it mess up. Yeah. So I do that, and then I find what the culprit is. It's when I input a web source into the graphics layer, and immediately <laughs> borked everything. So I was like, well, shit. Does that mean the PZ's tools that he's made is? So technically what you're seeing on screen right now, um, the rotating text and the, the percentage readouts, those are all web-based tools. 
those are things that our developer, uh, Pillowzak, PZ, in the chat room, uh, has built and outputs to a website. We load those websites in to give the information real-time updates that's tracking with the hashtags and everything else. So I was like, well, maybe there's something. I know we just put added an extra thing this morning. Maybe something changed. So as I'm talking to him in Discord, I was like, well, let me do my, before I just start thinking maybe it's something there, let me input some other websites. So I'll just input a real generic. Yeah. I'll just input Google as a source. Let's see what happens. I input Google as a source, everything shuts down. It still stops the video and messes up the tracks. Um, so I am confused. <laughs> Very confused. I know when I got when I came down in the morning, I was like, "Oh yeah, we normally just like reload stuff if it doesn't and work." And it's fine. And, yeah, and usually it works, but not this morning. No, it was no, like no. in the preview, it'd be okay. You'd push it, and it'd be like, I, 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 and it just it just falls apart. Yeah. So I uh, I started thinking, okay, what could have changed between yesterday and today? What has possibly changed? Yeah. I couldn't find anything. Nothing. No push through updates. No nothing. Uh, so I don't know what is causing a browser source within the graphics layers to make the whole graphics layer system mm -hmm. fall apart within live stream. Not a clue. And it's it's above my understanding because it's not something that I can deduce because it's happening within the software itself, not from outside sources. Yeah. So then I was like, well. Maybe I can still get this all set up. I'll <coughs> build all of my web-based stuff in vMix, and then I'll output over NDI because it's the only program we have that does transparency over NDI. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'll get it all built in there, and then I'll just output over NDI into my graphics layers, and then we'll be fine. Yeah. The second I inputted that NDI source into the graphics layer, everything fell apart. So it wasn't just a browser. It was also NDI. So I was like, so anything network-based. When I loaded in images and or videos, it's fine. I load in a single network source, whether it's browser or NDI, it falls apart. So I have not been able to figure it out. Uh, I, I'm totally baffled. Um, my next step was like, well, I just got to go to support. And then I remember, ah, this is what I hate about live stream. <laughs> this is their conundrum. Their support <laughs> is dog oh, shit. shit. <laughs> um, one of the issues with doing this kind of stuff and pushing the hardware and the software as far as we possibly can. We're yeah. kind of pioneers in an industry that's not that big. It's rather small. And there's a lot of problem solving that has to happen and people that have to break things to figure out that they could be broken that way. Yeah. And uh, most of the time when you go to support for these kinds of things, it's the most basic of basic shit. Did you remember to turn on your output, you know, before you click go live? Did you set the right, you know, stuff that's just Did like. Did you turn the power on? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, is hardware encoding turned on or off? Like really basic, basic stuff. And if you want in live stream to get any official support, you can't unless yeah. you pay to be one of their enterprise members for $75 a month. That is the only way you can get someone on the phone to answer your questions and to help you. $75 a month for an $800 piece of software. It's 800 fucking dollars. And they want me to pay $75 a month for support. Because <laughs> uh, they just, you know, they want more money. And it's, <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> or I can just send them an email. Well, here's the thing. Yeah. I, we have a current issue that's going on right now that we've been trying to work with them on. Uh, our RTMP servers, so the way that when Malika's streaming upstairs, her signal is coming to us from OBS, output RTMP to our server down here. It's outputting in OBS at 29.97 frames per second. Our project down here is 29.97 frames per second, but the input in live stream says 30.30 frames per second must be converted. So then it converts the signal, which puts a lot of extra uh, work into your system because it's doing live conversion of video that's coming in. When we first noticed this was happening, we we're like, well, that's a lot of extra work on our computer. We don't want that. So let's figure it out. So we tested OBS output. We tested live view output. We tested wire stream, uh, wirecast output. We tested basically anything that could output an RTMP. Every single source that came in, it was reading it on the codec level in live stream as a wrong frames per second and would mm -hmm. convert it. So I sent them an email about it and I was like, okay, here's what's happening. I know all my settings. Here's all the documentation of everything that's going on. It took me six weeks 
to get a response back over email. Six weeks. God damn. When I got a response back over email, it said, here's the beta version. See if this fixes the problem. Let us know if it doesn't. I installed the beta. Still happens. I emailed them back. Still the exact same issue. I contacted Live View Support. They said this is most likely a decoding issue within Livestream. Um, I, and I told them, if you need any more information from me, please let me know. I would be happy to provide. And that was two months ago. Have not got a response. <laughs> because I am not an enterprise member that pays $75 a month for support. <laughs> so at four... We're doing Tech Tuesday with that. Well, I mean, yeah, the, uh, shit's not working, y'all. So, like, uh, I mean, I've got it basically, I've got the basics done. Yeah. But I don't trust when something's falling apart at a fundamental level within the graphics layers, which to the point of, like, if I hit these buttons, I just hit them. Watch how long it takes for those to go away. The whole graphics layer system is falling apart. Well. The, 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 it's something is, like, from the internal infrastructure of how it's communicating, it's, it's lagging. It's falling apart. Our system isn't even close to running out of resources. Not even close. But I can't tell you what's changed between yesterday and today. Because <clears> according <throat> to my system logs, nothing. I can't figure it out. But I have no one to call. So, um, No support. Um, oh, so, Keitsuki, it's not that bad of a delay. But that's just – that is a basic file. Yeah, normally it just, like, goes up That's and a comes basic down. file. For instance, when we're doing our voting system on screen, it won't run right now. Yeah. Uh, it falls apart. It won't even run. The in-between screen with our schedule and the video won't run. It won't even load. So these are just the most basic of low resource possible. They're, they're working, but nothing else is working. Yeah. Uh, absolutely nothing. So – um, at 4 p.m., we were supposed to be this game is just cursed. playing. The, yeah, we were going to do this last Tuesday. This is proof that Tuesdays are cursed. <laughs> I think we should just fuck this game and not play it. Ah! <laughs> ever. We're going to be playing just that at 4 p.m., but now most likely at 4 p.m., I'm just going to have a camera on the workstation, and we'll, it's just going to be hanging out with me, and we're going to do some tech work because mm. I'm probably – I think my current plan is to do what we did in 2017 which was we run all of our streams through Wirecast, which has a lot of its own issues, mm -hmm. um, and we output them over NDI into Livestream, uh, and we use Livestream as our uh, input kind of like system where everything falls into it, Yeah. and then uh, we just output with Livestream. So we're not doing graphics in live stream. We're not doing any special because right now we're pushing live stream to the fucking max. We're doing stuff with it we've never done before. You know, with all the different inputs, all of the different like timers and on-screen overlays and all that stuff. In the past, we just used live stream as an output. Everything would just kind of come into it on its way out to Twitch, mm -hmm. and we even had like a separate station set up I where it was that, like, yeah. yeah, back in 2017. So, um, what I'll probably be doing today at 4 p.m is building everything out in Wirecast, seeing what changes have happened, because I haven't used it in almost a year and a half, so I'm sure there's been some changes. Building out all of our folders and overlays, getting that all ready, and then testing the output into Livestream and making sure all that works so we can... And, and I have to do this because we don't have time. <laughs> We're live so much. Otherwise, I you'd don't, be doing it I, I, 2 I, in the morning. I can't be up until 4 a.m. Like, yeah. I can't do it. Uh my health is too important right now and uh, we're already all pushing ourselves way too hard. So um, I want to make sure we can still do the watch alongs. I want to make sure we can, you know, Malika's fine up there because that's a whole separate system. Yeah. So I just today built everything out in OBS up there for her to where it's kind of natively built in and I don't have to run anything from down here and she can just output to me and then I output to Twitch. So mm. she'll be fine. It's more just for our shows that we do down here. I kind of have to fix it because I'm really nervous. If something's breaking down at that level, I can't rest and be comfortable until I know that we've found a solution. Yeah. And this makes me really nervous because, like, what if this happened on a day we were supposed to do Coloc? You know, like, we run graphics layers through that entirety of that show. So it's like this kind of shit just drives me – it drives me bonkers, man. Yeah. I, uh <coughs> – oof. Oof. Why do you have to use live stream for the main output? Well, I'll tell you, Tree Skylark, because it has RTMP server input. Wirecast does not. So for us to be able to take signals from Lucas, from Malika upstairs, from our IRL backpack, we need something that can take all those signals together and then push them out to Twitch. 
Uh, and the reason we do that is we lose viewers every time we go offline. For instance, what we had to do today with Lucas. If we have to go offline and back online, we lose viewers. So we need to have a system in place that allows us to stay online the entire time. And the only way we can do that is having something that kind of gathers all the inputs from other places. If Wirecast had RTMP server support, uh, I would look into using it as our primary, but it doesn't. So we have to use, like, we're usually using two to three pieces of software at once. Yeah. So in this new setup, we would most likely be using vMix, um, Livestream, and Wirecast all at the same time on the same computer just to get one signal out. <coughs> uh, we are not a turnkey like when you see sports, ESPN, things like that, those are turnkey systems and they're built to do one specific thing and they're usually run by a team of 20 people. <laughs> it's like, it's, I, I wish we lived in a world where we could have someone design a program that's mm -hmm. like perfect for what we do. That takes the best of like live stream, Wirecast, yeah. vMix and puts it all into one system. So when we load it up, it's like, great, we have everything we fucking need. <laughs> it's Nobody makes it. No, nobody, nobody makes, makes it. Nobody makes it yet. Nobody has made a piece of software with everything we need. It's like just enough or not enough. And we used to work really closely with Livestream, their mm. team, uh, and we have direct contact with them. And we'd tell them, like, these are things we need as streamers trying to push things forward. Yeah. Livestream at the time, or not Livestream, sorry, Wirecast, Telestream, Wirecast. Telestream, yeah. Uh, we used to work with them really closely. At the time, their biggest client was still churches, though. Yeah. You know, like, and and so like, they're, they're going to build hey. their software to what churches need, yeah. which is usually just an input and an overlay. Yeah. Um, they don't need anything nuts. Yeah. We need a lot of, you know, picture in picture, immediate kind of like no lag web representation, lots of inputs, lots of inputs. You know, typically on these kinds of systems, you're really just getting one input from something else you're outputting from a board mm -hmm. you know like your black magic one sdi out into your computer and that might be all you need maybe you've got another one set up with hdmi out for graphics or something or most of the time people now are doing that over ndi and uh it's uh we have a very unique setup in a situation but we stopped using wirecast because it was too buggy mm -hmm. it would crash on us all the time so I'm oh, also I remember those days. I'm also very nervous about doing that. Livestream does not crash on us as much. It has, but not as much. Yeah. It has been far more stable, and that's partly why this is so concerning, because I don't know where the issue is coming from. I can't tell if there's something on the network that's causing issues, but that doesn't make any sense to me, because things are loading okay. We're outputting okay. Mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I don't know. But, it's uh, a fun time. <laughs> It's a, it's a technological struggle what yeah. we do. It is. It is. We're trying really hard to bring you guys some like special content every day. I, and maybe I can make this all educational. Maybe I can find a way to make what I do today at 4 educational. I am bummed, though, because our board games usually do the best for us financially, and watching me talk about tech will not do well for us financially. Uh, but that's just, just how it is. Um, it's, uh, I never ever in my life thought I would be doing this much tech support as an adult. You know, that is not... This is what it feels like when you go home and your parents are like, hey, I got these things I need to do. You're like, God damn it. I'm, yeah. on, I'm on my weekend trip. I don't want to be doing any tech shit. <laughs> and a lot of people have asked me in the past, too, like how and, – and honestly, it's really strange. I feel like just because we've continued going live through all this, mm -hmm. um, because we're continuing to, like, output, I've gotten three messages in the last week from people wanting to start their own studios and asking me for advice. And I want to answer them and try to help out, but at the same time, I'm really busy. And I also, like, get paid to consult, but I'm going to help out people that need it yeah. however I can. But I also, like, like buckle up. <laughs> you know, like, Strap in, ladies I, I think and gentlemen. a lot of people have a misconception of how much work it is, yeah. how difficult it is to make things look the way we make them look. I mean, I remember, like, just starting out. When I was just starting on my bedroom, I was like, man – this is already a lot to just figure it out for three people. And I had no experience of running tech at all. And it was like, well, I'm just going to learn. Okay, where does this go? How does this plug in? But when you have to do it for a, a rolling slate of content every single day, like the needs of every show here that we do are different. There's There are no two shows that are run the same way. Mm -hmm. Every single show has like one thing less, yep. one thing more. Two extra things, oh, one yeah. extra thing. Yesterday, just setting up the stream for Felicia to be able to see the trailers we were watching yeah. and hear them without duplicating her audio required a whole new setup and system that I've never used before. 
because that was something we'd never done before mm-hmm. and it needed to be done in a way that could be efficient and not like have her getting duplicate of herself right. in her ear. So I had to install some new software and do kind of like software based audio routing within windows to make sure we could hear it. She could hear it. We could see it. She could see it. Uh, and those kinds of solutions, like, um, it's not a five minute fix. No, it's not. But it's also like, I'm glad I've learned these skills, yeah. but my background is like painting and cinematography. And mm. I know a lot of people have asked me like, how'd you learn how to do all this and blah, blah, blah. It's a hundred percent self-taught yeah. and it's a hundred percent dealing with bullshit like this and having to find solutions mm-hmm. and then getting new skills out of finding those solutions and figuring out new ways to do stuff. Um, often not out of want, but out of need. need. Yeah. To and, keep so, and, and it's usually not like, it's one thing when it's a uh, when it's a need and you have a day to figure it out or not or you know at least at least half a day to figure it out when you have an hour you're like oh my god mm-hmm. <laughs> that's always the most stressful thing but yeah you know it's been a good time yeah yeah uh but we do have stuff to talk about today yeah uh somebody asked in the chat will Colock 1991 continue i'm almost in with season two and it's just so good i would love for it to continue but we're on lockdown week 5.2 of social distancing (laughs) thanks adam Uh, (laughs) we are on lockdown here in our garage and we've been trying to actually increase our hours live to give you something to feel connected to now you're connected to this crazy old white dude who won't stop yelling about tech uh, I got you got a boomer you yelling at you about technology all day, and you got at least another month of this because <laughs> we're on lockdown until May fifteenth. Yeah, for the time being. And that's the, the thing being. too, though. Like, in a way, we're running into all these issues because we are trying to push the format and we're trying to do something new and different, and that works within the confines of what we're stuck doing for you. You know, if we're just running our regular show. That's a piece of fucking cake. Like, honestly, it looks more complicated, but it's not mm-hmm. because we have a board operator. And we have someone who can sit there and actually switch between inputs, make sure the cameras and everything are working. Like, part of the reason we're running into a lot of issues and a lot of things are very difficult is because we're having to think about how do we do all this with no one here? Yeah. How do we do – just having one person at a computer makes a world of difference Yeah. to be able to run everything. So we're having to build everything out and try to keep it interactive and make it engaging while all being done right here. Right there. But yeah. <laughs> uh, tonight, after Tech Tuesday, well, wh- what's Malika cooking, actually? We should start there. Uh, uh, beef lettuce wraps today. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, she's doing lettuce wraps today. I love lettuce wraps so much. That just tickles, tingles my jingles all over the place. Uh, at 4 o'clock, you'll have Tech Tuesday with Dad. And then at 6, we are watching Doc Tooth from director Yorgos Lanthimos, the director of The Lobster and um, uh, Killing of a Sacred Deer. I have not seen this movie. I am excited to watch it. Uh, oh, and The Favorite. The Favorite was also another movie that he did that I thought was really, really, really well good. Really good. So I'm excited to experience this this movie. Me too. Every movie of his I've seen, I've immediately fallen in love with. So. Yeah, yeah. And I've only so I've only seen three. And I know he's got a, a few other films that he did in his native country of Greece that I have not seen. The Dark Tooth might actually be made in, might actually be made in Greece, or it's, it might be his first uh, American film. I'm not 100 percent sure. But we'll have we'll have some more fun facts on that stuff later tonight. And then today, if you want to continue supporting Hyper RPG, uh, you can continue supporting at OneShot.StrayLogic.com. And you can decide what we watch next week. That's right. The options today are Infinity War, yes. Fallout, and uh, Miracle. Miracle. Which I will admit, I forgot that uh, Mission Impossible Fallout and Avengers Infinity War have already been choices before. Oh, they have? Yeah. I, picked, I even forgot, I too. picked Infinity War, and you picked Fallout. Oh, yeah. And I forgot what movies ended up taking, taking the... Uh, I think Infinity War was when we did Batman Begins, but then that left Netflix, so we did Twin Peaks. <laughs> and then Fallout was the same week as something else that you ended up picking. Um, whatever, they're back, and Miracle is on there. Uh, I'm a hockey fan, and I really like that movie. It's a real feel-good movie, and, uh, you know. And we're not watching the trailers there. I didn't have time to wire all that up. Yeah, so, so. we're not watching the trailers. But uh, I-, I thought those were three really fun movies uh, that I think would be a lot of fun to just, like, chew on some dinner and just hang mm-hmm. out and have a good time. Uh, all the watch songs we've been doing have been really, really good. I'm sad Dude. I missed the rest for In the oh. for Love. So last, last night, night, we watched Fallen Angels, and it was good. Yeah. But uh, because we hit our goal, I agreed to watch In the Mood for Love with the chat room. Mm-hmm. And 
Th that and 2049 have been like my favorite experiences to watch with the chat because so many people hadn't seen them yeah. and so many people watching were blown away by it, yeah. which made me so happy. Yeah, yeah. And and just getting to share that with everybody was really, really cool. I mean, In yeah. the Mood for Love is one of my favorite movies of all it's time. It's so beautiful. And uh, the, the images and the feelings get stuck in your head. And uh, I, g I really need to show you 2046, but we got to find it. A I good know. copy. <laughs> not, not the DVD. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to decide, uh, you can help us decide what movie you guys want to watch. And, look, this is all – this is your choice. I'm not going to influence – I will. Fallout's the best option. <laughs> I'm not going to influence you. Uh, I've seen all three of these movies, and I love all three of them. So if there's a movie you have not seen out of these three, then pick it. I'm sure 99% of us have Fallout's seen... Fallout's the best option. <laughs> I'm sure 99% of us have seen Avengers Infinity War, but it's always a good time, even though it ends on a little bit of a Debbie Downer, but that's fine because it all gets avenged in Avengers Endgame. Fallout's the best option. <laughs> and Fallout is just a really good fucking time. It's um, a good movie. It's, it was actually really funny to see those posts from Henry Cavill on Instagram, how he was painting uh, Warhammer mm -hmm. minis, and uh, I think a lot of people were are surprised at how big of a gamer he is, but, you know, he was in The Witcher, and he really, like, wanted that role desperately. Yeah. Like, he was going to Netflix way before they even had a script or a showrunner and was like, yo, I really want to play this character. Like, he's talked about in interviews before, but then I, I brought it to Malika that maybe people forgot this but, or, or uh, just don't know. He actually almost lost the role of Superman because of World of Warcraft. He was playing one day, and he was in the middle of an important mission, and he says that he got a phone call, and the phone rang, and he looked, and it came up as like a no-name number, and uh, he thought, oh, this might be Zack Snyder, but before he was able to like get to the phone, the call had ended, so he's like, oh shit, did I just like lose this opportunity to like get this role because of World of Warcraft? <laughs> ended up calling him back, and he got the role, but uh, yeah, I thought that was that was a pretty funny little thing. So yeah, he's a, he's a big gamer. He's talked about gaming all the time. Um, so I thought that was that was pretty cool, but yeah, three there's, three really good movies. There's another kind of new thing going on today. Uh, while Malika's cooking, That's right. you'll be able to tip for what she cooks next week mm -hmm. on Tuesday. Similar to how we've been doing the movie watch longs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she'll be doing that, and I've got three options pulled up. <laughs> wow, Squirtle's bubble cake. Malika will cosplay a Squirtle and make bubble cake. Daisy Mae's turnips. Uh, Malik will cosplay as Daisy May, May from Animal Crossing and make turnips, or Diddy Kong's banana bread. <laughs> She'll cosplay as Diddy Kong and make banana bread. I, but I think that's like super fun. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I, I love, I love, I feel like we've really been able to kind of figure out for ourselves and for the audience what you all really, really mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. and find ways to make it more engaging and interactive. I'm wondering how long before Malika really Runs regrets it. this decision because she's so busy with deals right now. Yeah. Uh, that's why she's not doing hypercast anymore. But yeah. now she's just replaced hypercast with doing cosplay in the morning to get ready for cooking. Right, right. Uh, and then she stays up till. Hopefully, she does it casually. I hope yeah. it's like casual cosplay because I don't want her killing herself what are over they, cosplay. What, what do they call it? Uh, oh, Disney bounding. Yeah, where yeah, you yeah, just yeah. like hint towards the character, but you don't actually have like a full-on costume. I think all, like for for yeah, you can just find little accents around the characters. Anyway, and every five hundred dollars, we're going to be giving away spots at my clubhouse. Oh if yeah, you've been paying attention. Uh, I've been. Uh, we're on. We're doing that through Discord. And if you haven't joined our Discord, I highly recommend that. Discord.gg/hyperrpg. Uh, everyone, anyone who gets picked at at um, every time we hit our goal throughout the day, uh, will be joining my clubhouse. And I'm really leaving it up to you guys to decide what we do. Um, I will throw some ideas in, but I also want to hear from other people. Don't just say you're down for whatever I'm down to do. It's, a, it's on you. Ooh. This is on you. Ooh. You're going to make this decision, not me. This is whatever you want to get out of this. If you just want it to be hangout time, that's totally cool. If you want to actually learn something, that's also totally cool. If you just want to watch something, I'm down for that too. Uh, this is all on you though. All on you. Uh, and then we've got some movies uh, that we've got. For the rest of the week as well, because you guys voted on that. Uh, tomorrow, we've got The Lure, which is Malika's, uh, Malika's day of picking movies. Thursday, Belle de Jour. Those were Lucas's picks. And Friday, Diamantino. And that was, uh, those were Zach's. Or actually, that was Zach's pick. But me, Malika, and Zach all contributed a movie. So that'll be a lot of fun. I really actually cannot wait to watch that movie. <laughs> That movie looks absolutely ridiculous. And I don't know if you saw it uh, last night at the very end, right before I went offline, Shadow Uzumaki put in five bucks to make Parasite win because Mother and Parasite were tied in the hole. In the no shit. Now, Arsenal Roy tried getting them to tie again, but I had gone offline already. 
No shit. So Parasites next Monday. Damn. I was actually, yeah, I, we, we hadn't had a chance to talk about that. I was curious, like, what movie ended up winning? Because I remember right when I left, Mother was leading, but Parasite was, like, super close. Mm-hmm. Woo, Parasite it is. I'm super excited to rewatch that movie. I think that movie's so fucking amazing. And if you all did not get a chance, if you're just now tuning into Hyper RPG for the day, I highly suggest when you have time, go back and watch Lucas's VOD from this morning. Uh, Lucas had a really heartfelt discussion about... I got teared up watching it upstairs. It was rough, man. Yeah. It was rough. Uh, Lucas had a very heartfelt discussion about uh, kind of getting through COVID and having symptoms still and what it's been like for him emotionally and physically and kind of, you know, how everything's affecting him. And it was, it was a really good discussion. Yeah. Yeah, and I, you know, it was kind of tough to hear him talk about, you know, how he didn't want to talk about it because he didn't know exactly, like, what – how it would make him feel, what people would say. And I think, that, I think that's, like, a really important learning lesson for everybody. If you are sick and you're going through something and you feel comfortable talking about it, you shouldn't be afraid or ashamed of what people are going to say about it. If people really love you and care about you, they're going to su- they're going to want to support you in any way they can. And I know right now it's like it, it's we're living in a really crazy time where everything the news changes every hour every day and we're finding out new things and then we're you know there's just so much going on, but I think it's really important and I think that's why we're so thankful that we get to do this every day is that we uh, have an opportunity to just as a community talk. Talk, support each other. Um, I think it's really important. Yeah, man. Zach needs a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Kaiju! I mean, I remember telling uh, Maliki yesterday, because she was like, we really need to get an RPG up on the channel. I was like, I would love to. I've been trying to get into View Scream, but I was like, but every, like, since this all started, I have been nonstop busy with dealing with all this stuff. And I was like, maybe, maybe if we can get through this week with no tech issues, I'll have enough like time to maybe catch up an hour on the rule book every day this week and start like getting prepped for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, as of yesterday, I was like, knock on wood, everything's working great. We're good. Everything's fine. Turn on the computer this morning. And the computer went, (laughs) ha 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 ha. Yeah. And it wasn't even the computer. It's a piece of software that I, I have very little control over. In that regard, so yep, yeah, yeah, it's good old time, good old. Because I would love to. I mean, people ask me all the time, like, why, why can we do this? Can we do that? And I'm like, that sounds fucking great, but who's gonna do it? Who's gonna run it? Who's got the time? We're busy as shit. We're busy. We're busy. We're trying to make as much stuff happen as we can, um, but we have quality standards to uphold here. You know, a lot of people. We're in a unique position. Sometimes. It's a good and a bad thing. Whereas we do a lot of business to business work. A lot of people tune into our stream that aren't Twitch viewers. Mm -hmm. They're people we want to work with. They're people we want to build professional relationships with. We never know when they might be watching. We we never know when they might be checking in on us to see what kind of work we do after we just had an email with them telling them, here's what we can provide for you as a service. We are under a lot more scrutiny from a professionalism standpoint and uh, overall look, sound, video quality, all of that stuff, uh, because we have a lot of business to business clients Mm -hmm. and we know they tune in because we hear about it and we hear about people being like, Oh, I heard so-and-so and and how you guys are doing this and doing that. We have, I feel like more people within the industry keep track of what we're doing than viewers. Yeah. We've always had kind of this more of a, of a better reputation with people within the industry than viewership. And, uh, that's a good and a bad thing. You know, we would love to have more viewers, but at the same, and I would love to be able to just be like, man, relax. It doesn't matter. Other people can stream with just a webcam and whatever, you know, it's just fine. It's fine. I would love to do that, but we really can't. Um, so if we're going to do an RPG show, if we're going to do anything, we're gonna have to make sure it reaches our quality standard because we never know who might be tuning in and who might be then basing their judgment on us and whether or not we work together on that viewership and how we pulled it off. Because a lot of people, when they're tuning into us in that situation, it's because they want to hire us to do stuff for them. And if they tune into something we're doing and it doesn't look good, it doesn't sound good, it doesn't reach that quality standard, they're not gonna hire us. And you know, a large portion of our revenue comes from business to business now and it's the only way we'll ever get me back on payroll, <laughs> ever, because mm-hmm. uh, the viewership, you know, we're never going to make enough money off the audience to, to put me back on payroll, ever. 
And, and that's not to discourage you. That's to say, I knew that going into it. And we put, you know, our, our tips and our sub revenue goes towards paying everyone else that works here. I, a lot of whether or not I have a future is based on business to business. So it's very important to us to make sure that we're hitting all the quality standards that we have to. And uh, that's why we haven't done anything yet that a lot of people are begging us to do, because I have yet to find a way that we could do it that makes me comfortable, that it won't make us look bad, if that all makes sense. That's a TED Talk and a half. Is it? I don't know. I don't know. Thanks for coming to it. Uh, also excited to see that there are new people who uh, just joined our Discord who are in the chat room for the first time. Oh, that's Thank awesome. Thank you so much for that's watching really cool. and being here. Uh, it's it's actually really fun to to jump into the Discord every once in a while, in into the general at least. And uh, you know, I I, had, I hit up the uh, Discord and I, told, I added everyone and said that we were doing this, and some people were like, wait, what do I do? I've never done this before. Help! <laughs> and I'm like, oh, and the mods are great. The mods will always help you. If you guys yeah. have questions about anything, just ask the mods uh, in the chat room, or you can ask you know in general or wherever uh, on Discord. People always point you point you in the right direction if you're confused or anything. I'm, I I know. Someone who like came into this and not knowing what Discord or anything was, uh, everybody was super, super helpful, yeah. which was really, really cool. I did see another question in the chat from Kezbox saying, have you guys uh, are sponsorships out of the question? So sponsorships are never out of the question. We get sponsorships, but I think there's this misconception with our with viewers that sponsorships are as easy as saying, I'll do sponsorships. That's not how it works. Um, sponsorships are usually a lot they of negotiation. They too. have their own standards. Yeah. And that's usually based on viewership. We don't have enough viewers to get good sponsor deals. We just don't. Uh, we often get hired as a production team because that's what we do really, really well. Uh, we don't get enough viewers to get sponsorships. And often when we do get reached out to about sponsorship deals, because our costs are so high as a company, it's not even worth it for us. If we were just one person streaming yeah. out of our house, like that could end up being a decent form of revenue. But for us, it's really not. We hardly ever get hit up for sponsor deals that are actually worth us as a production company's time and resources because our costs are so much higher. Yeah. And, and we do them. You'll see YouTube videos going up every once in a while, mm -hmm. like Skillshare, things like that. Those are sponsored vids. But just getting sponsored work isn't as easy as saying, I'll take sponsors. It, it doesn't really work like that. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very complicated um, system and you usually need somebody hunting for you out there. It's, it's a whole other job <laughs> to find it's, that it's, work. It's its own like yeah. thing. It's its own beast. Mm -hmm. It's pretty, no, it's pretty insane. And like, I, I, I think like, you know, we're really thankful for the sponsor that we sponsors that we've had a chance mm -hmm. to work with. And some of them have come back to us repeatedly knowing very well that like, how we operate and what we do and yep. all that sort of stuff. Those are great. Yeah, but it is very hard because sometimes these sponsors, they look at, especially on a, on a platform like YouTube, or I, I guess even Twitch, it's the same thing. Because if you're a single streamer or you're a single person content creator, then like th the cause is just like, yeah, what are you going to make? But for us, it's like, okay, if we're going to set aside the time to make something, what does that take people away from on other projects or other shows? Yep. How do we like tie that all in so it makes it actually worth our time? So it, it really... Um, time is our biggest resource here. Yeah. It, it has to be compensated properly. Yeah, um, exactly, exactly, yep. exactly. And uh, yeah, it's... You know, we, we've had a lot and, and they're good, but it's just, it's, it's difficult. It's, everything is more layered and complicated than I think people assume. Yeah. And I mean, look, it, and there's also not a ton of transparency as to like how that whole process works. Like it's a learning experience for everybody mm -hmm. who first gets into sponsorships because a lot of people are like, well, what is the standard to charge? I think it's a learning experience for the sponsors too. Oh, for sure. Because uh, what we do is so different. What do they get out of it? And what they get out of yeah. it, we have to often pitch to them how it's a value to them. Uh, and that's work in and of itself. You know, anytime we have to make a new deck for somebody, that takes time. Yeah. And that's time that Malika is going to take out of her day to do mm -hmm. other stuff. And we often have to tailor our relationships with each individual brand yeah. in a unique way. We have a lot we could actually share with people in this stuff. I you know. know every time we start lot. talking about it, I'm like, you know, we actually have a lot of knowledge on these things yeah. that we don't realize we have because we're just head down. Yeah, moving forward. and it's <coughs> it's always evolving. I mean, I know even before I worked here, you know, being a freelancer when it came to video editing or graphic design and all that sort of stuff. Th again, because we live in an, we work in an industry that is so saturated with not just content, but people who do certain types of things. And sometimes they're a one man team, a two man team, a four man team, a thirty man team. 
rates and all those things, they're constantly mm-hmm. shifting. Mm-hmm. Constantly. Like, what we're going to charge is going to be different from, like, one person 100%. Charges, 100%. You know? And it could be higher or lower. And, it really and, just depends. In complete fairness, we have to charge more befo- because we're a company. Yeah. And everyone has different rates. And we have a lot more overhead to cover. And we aren't going to get sometimes as many views as some one individual in front of their webcam. So not only are their costs lower, they don't have to charge as much yeah. to the brand because they have less overhead. Mm-hmm. So it, it complicates that overall system. And it's like uh, somebody just posted in chat, oh, like, get Dell to sponsor because Adam uses their laptop every day. That's exactly not how these things work. Yeah. You know how many people probably reach out and go, oh, hey, I use your stuff. Uh, can you sponsor me? They will never respond. That's not really how that works. Yeah. You, they have to be have someone on their department, their team has to have a mandate to then create an entire wing of their marketing firm to be like, okay, we want to reach this kind of audience. Mm -hmm. How do we do that? They form a plan, often with outside resources. They're often going to go to some uh, marketing team or a platform and ask them, okay, we want to start reaching this kind of audience with our product. Find me people. And then those individuals go out and find the streamers. And then each one is its own individual contract. And that's why building relationships is so important. And often we fall into a little bit of a trap because we're all so busy. We don't have time to build those relationships Mm -hmm. because it it usually still comes down to who you know, who you know with these marketing firms who are out hunting for this representation. And we do get messaged often. Mm -hmm. I have three emails in my inbox right now from people wanting us to play games and they would pay us, but the rates are too low. It's not worth our per hour rate as a company. But if I was just myself at home, I'd be like, hell yeah, let's do it. Let's go. Uh, but it doesn't work for us. Mm-hmm. And I, I wish it was more simple, but it's, yeah. it's not. And people have tried to make it more simple. There's been services that have shown up where it's like, if you're a creator, put your info in here and we'll reach out to you for these kinds of opportunities. But those services often hurt us yeah. because our stats don't line up with the standard of what a lot of people are looking for in these marketing firms or when they just build a service that lines you up with people. You know, the second somebody who has a lot more concurrent viewers than us signs up, they're of course going to go like, oh yeah, yeah, let's, let's do that. So in person to person, building those relationships always work better because then we can give them an actual snapshot of like, hey, we may not have the highest concurrence, but we have great engagement and we have a really positive and awesome community. And if you share our brand values, we can give you a lot of value there. But it doesn't always work. You know, we've tried. uh, What are some good examples of things that we've done that worked really well, like that we got great? I know um, Valiant was a great partner. Yeah. Yeah. And we did really well for yeah, them. Yeah. But like me undies barely worked at all. Yeah. You know, like uh, we barely moved. And oh, and the suit company. Suit company. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Not one. Yeah. Not one. That was a completely failed. Yeah. Uh, we thought given the season with a lot of weddings coming up and me pushing it, like wearing the suit on Kolok, maybe, maybe, but not one. And we tried. You know, we tried and that didn't work out at all. But mm. now we know like our audience base that's not not really going to work. Not cup of tea. Yeah, it's not going to work. Humble Bundle works pretty well for us, isn't Humble it? Bundle works great, yeah. but it's not really a sponsorship. Yeah. Humble Bundle is very like a, different. It's like an affiliate thing? It's an affiliate thing, and it's kind of like the audience who's buying from Humble Bundle gets <coughs> to choose what percentage goes towards charity, what goes towards us. It's a great way to kind of share the pot and help out a lot of people. Mm-hmm. So it's not really sponsorship. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it's the kind of stuff it's fun to talk about, and I'm sure Malika yeah. would love to talk about it too. If it's something people have an interest in us talking about more in our process and how we do these things, uh, you know, we, I think we do have a lot to share, but we're still learning. We're mm-hmm. still growing. We're having to adapt Well, and that constantly. industry is always adapting constantly, and especially with stuff that's been going on in the last month or two. I mean, I'm sure that there's a ton of companies that are now trying to, like, how do we re-strategize wo- how we sponsor content or what type of content we sponsor? What do we want our messaging to be? I mean, just when we just did this last Skillshare video, they uh, they sent me a brand new slate of messaging that they were like, okay, these are the terms we don't want to use. Mm-hmm. These are terms we do want to use. Here's why. Because it's you know directly related to what's happening. And we want to make sure we encourage people to to like want to go do things and want to learn and all that sort of stuff instead of you know being aggressive and saying like, well, you have all this free time, do something with it. We don't want to go that route. We want to like make sure like, hey, if you're feeling overwhelmed, if you're yeah. feeling this and this. Here's an opportunity for you. So, yeah, it's uh, it's always it's always an adjustment for for everybody, you know. So, it's got to roll the punches on it. Um, I'm sure you're excited to talk about this though. Boom Studios. Yes. Netflix. Yes. Are making babies. 
we'll see what those babies <laughs> end up becoming. Uh, yeah, so that was announced <laughs> yesterday, right? It was, Boom and yeah. Netflix having a partnership there. Uh, so for those that don't know, Netflix already has a comic book partnership um, with a couple people. Dark Horse and Miller World, or Millar World. Also, Rob uh, Liefeld. Right. So um, Netflix has yeah. been buying up certain rights and properties, uh, but not too much has come out of it yet. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to – I'm being cautiously optimistic because the Miller World one, they've had stuff in production for a long time mm -hmm. now. But I don't think we've actually seen anything yet. Uh, I thought – let me see. I thought he had one project that was already on its way. Let's see. There's something. But out of that boom relationship, yeah, yeah. upon that kind of coming together, uh, to me, immediately I think about Lumberjanes mm -hmm. and how primed and ready that is for an animated show. Mm -hmm. It is just ready to go out the door. You know, it's perfect. You and I talked a lot when we were reading it. Something is eating the children. Seems perfect for T. It's like it's like felt like it was a pitch. <laughs> it was yeah for a show. <laughs> uh, and I that's part of the deal. Um, I'm sure there's others I'm so not thinking of right now. For Miller, Millar World, uh, films include Empress to be written by Lindsay Beer, Huck to be written by Ted Melfi, and, Sh and Sharky the Bounty Hunter to be written by Michael Bacall. The series includes Jupiter's Legacy from Stephen S. DeKnight mm -hmm. and a multilingual version of American Jesus. So this was in 2018, in July. Yeah, I haven't that heard this was anything. announced. So I don't, th I don't think any of these have actually started shooting. Um, but yeah, I mean. That, I think that was the thing that excited me the most was seeing some of the titles that were mentioned. Uh, you know, we'll we'll find out. I think uh, at some point in the near future, yeah. which of these titles will uh, get made. And I want to help people clarify some stuff right now because immediately when this got announced, I got tweeted out a bunch. Everybody probably knows why. Oh. And uh, that is not boom owned properties. Mm -hmm. So I think it's important to understand the difference between <clears throat> what is a licensed product that Boom puts out and what is an owned property that they themselves can license to other people. Uh, IDW and Boom both do a lot of licensed books. You know, Boom cannot, now that they have a deal with Netflix, make a Power Rangers show. That's yeah. not how that works yeah. because the Power Rangers book is licensed mm -hmm. to Boom. But Power Rangers is owned by, by Hasbro. Hasbro. So... Uh, a lot of people immediately assumed, oh, boom, Netflix, Power Rangers. No, that's, that's not how that, that works. <laughs> if Hasbro and Netflix announced a deal, yeah. then that's a different story. But um, that they don't own the license for that. Mm -hmm. So you have to be thinking about what are creator-owned properties that Boom has access to. That's mm -hmm. what you're most likely going to see. Yeah, it's something. Something is killing the children. Is such a fucking mm. good book. That I think it would I, – I totally agree with you. We talk about it quite a bit on Comics and Coffee, how there are books coming out now that while they work incredibly well as comic books or graphic novels, you can definitely see that this was made – with partial the, the partial intention of hopefully being turned into something more like a movie or a show, and I think that's also going to be more common going forward. I wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing more of these like non Marvel DC titles going more and more into sh into like series format. I think that because of the way comic book formats, the because of the way of the, the comic book format is. Obviously, Marvel Cinematic Universe people can say like, "Oh, that doesn't—that's not true." But I feel like a lot of that stuff can be better suited for television. Oh, 100 percent. Because it's sometimes it's, it's so episodic. And, yeah, it's episodic, yeah. sequential, long form. <clears throat> Most of them work way better. Yeah, whereas with, with like, I would say that like DC comic books and Marvel comics, they have huge runs, and you can take a lot of those elements yeah. and moments they're and adapt also, them. They're larger form. than life. They yeah. need to be on the big screen. Yeah. A lot of indie comics, I think, work really well as smaller, intimate stories. Can you imagine if like the Infinity War was like a six-part tv show it would be awesome yeah but we but wouldn't like, get it wouldn't be as big and epic uh, as it is yeah, yeah you need that cinematicness to yeah. it but i think that's super super exciting they also did say uh in this article that the deal expands boom's relationship with netflix beyond last year's jim henson series the dark crystal age of resistance interesting title and david of sandberg's forthcoming feature the unsound um here it says, this is interesting because here it says Boom Studios becomes the third comic book publisher to sign with Netflix. Well, I guess third comic book publisher. Publisher, not person. Yeah, not yeah. person. So, yeah, so it's Millar World and Dark Horse are the other publishers. And then Rob Liefeld has a deal with them as well. So I'm really, really looking forward to seeing what, what stuff comes out of this. And I do hope 
that we start to see more of this stuff happen. You know, I know Netflix is a big go-to for a lot of people just because of its reach. It's so yeah. enormous. Um, but some of these other smaller uh, publishers, if maybe we'll see more stuff on stuff like Amazon Prime or other streaming services, I don't know. We will see. Uh, I thought this was really cool that Sony is offering uh, a few games for free. They're calling it the Play at Home Initiative. As part of a new Play at Home Initiative, the company um, will be, let's see, uh, providing free games to help keep the PlayStation community entertained at home. Oh, cool. Uh, you'll be able to download Naughty Dog's Uncharted, the Nathan Drake Collection, a three-game collection that includes Uncharted, Drake's Fortune, Uncharted 2, uh, Among Thieves, and Uncharted 3, Drake's Deception. Uh, you'll be able to download these games for no charge from April 15th at 8 p.m. Pacific time through May 5th, which I think is really cool. Uh, also, another game you'll be able to download is That co- What? <laughs> that Game Company's... 2012 indie adventure title journey for free interesting i never played journey is it good oh it's amazing is it yeah nice yeah uh it also says users in germany and china will not have access to the uncharted collection instead users in those two countries will be granted free digital copies of 2017's action game knack 2 and journey that's awesome and they also did say that sony has uh, formed a 10 million dollar support fund for independent game developers damn so, I think that's uh, we talk about it pretty often. How this is going to become a more yeah. and more common thing that a lot of these companies, hopefully, and and uh, will be inspired to start relief funds because, like, I mean, video games is a bigger industry than movies, right? Uh, yeah. You know, so yeah. it's like I feel like all these companies can come together and like I mean, it's, I mean really help artists. There are a lot. That, there's a lot that can be done from home. Yeah. Uh, to an extent, mm-hmm. you know, I think indie game companies are in a better position than all the uh, others mm-hmm. it's the big ones that have a much harder time taking all those resources to home um but a lot of the i, I don't know i think they're in a position to adapt more so than than entertainment yeah i think entertainment's gonna have a much harder time for one there's better even though there's a lot of bullshit there's still better leadership mm-hmm. uh because it's, uh, yes and no I I anticipate better leadership on how to move forward through something like this from Microsoft, Sony, yeah. things like that in a video game level in those studios than in the entertainment side. Mm-hmm. You know, like in the entertainment side, it's just like it's fucking crickets right now. Nobody is saying how everyone will get through this. No. When most of your workforce is private contractors. Yeah. And that happens a lot in gaming too. And there are a lot of issues there that need to be overcome. A lot of overworking, a lot of bad shit like that, just like in the VFX industry. Yeah. But I feel like there's a little bit more expectation from the top down to actually give some leadership of how you get through it. Whereas in the entertainment industry, it's kind of like, well, everyone's a private contractor, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's like literally on a per job basis, which is also in gaming. Right. But it's weird. It's just like gaming seems to be handling it often. And I know this, too, from some of the game studios we work with and, like, the steps they're taking. Whereas, you know, when I start looking at the media companies we've worked with, they're just, like, you know, yeah. like. <sighs> it's wild. It's, it's like, it's super interesting to see just how everybody is sort of uh, dealing with everything in their own way. And some of it feels very unproductive. And some of it feels like it's on the right track. Yeah. Some of it feels like, uh, you know, it's, it's exceptional. I think that's a little bit more rare because I think we're, the more we find out every single day, the more people are sort of adjusting. But yeah, I mean, a lot of the conversations that I've watched and or read about, there are many, many people out there who are asking those questions of what is our industry going to look like after this? AMC and Cinemark are literally on the verge of filing for bankruptcy. Mm -hmm. Like it's going to happen probably this week, but like, what are we doing? And, well, and as an industry, gonna like, to, what are we doing? And someone's going to have to take some leadership and understand, like, okay, if this hits again in the fall, yeah. which most scientists think it might, yeah. what steps are we what taking, steps are we taking now yeah. to help protect us in that instance mm-hmm. and keep putting out content and media? Yeah. Uh, n- nothing so far. Yeah, I mean, there was even some uh, articles that I, that I saw that talks about sort of like the set culture and how mm-hmm. – very easy it is to spread. I mean, we've all or like we've been on yeah. set, so we know what that what that's like. I mean, 
you're constantly handing things over to people and it's just like you're not really you're not really thinking of of like cleanliness when you're doing that no, sort of stuff. You're no, just go, go, you're go, just go, 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 go. I mean, from the little things like handing lenses over to people and all that sort of stuff. I mean, there's literally it's built around handoff. It, it, yeah. Yeah. The whole industry on set is about like this trickle down of mm-hmm. responsibility. It's just and like it's, just like it's, ting, 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 it's a live ting, assembly ting, ting, ting. line. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It really is. It's a live assembly line. Um, it takes. It's an efficient thing once it happens, and yeah. you can understand why the, it's been built that way. And it really does fall apart in this kind of instance, you know. Like, and a lot of that is Hollywood's fault. Yeah. Hollywood and unions have done their best to adapt to technology but not to process <coughs> right because they don't want anyone to not have a job which is kind of understandable yeah but you know i think <coughs> youtubers live programmers things like that outside of those restrictions have adapted very quickly For and sure. moved forward very fast with new processes <coughs> and ways about going things yeah whereas hollywood is very much set in its ways mm-hmm and that very quickly can fall apart when it's challenged and it's kind of put to test. Uh, yeah, and I also, you know, just from a perspective, trying to kind of gauge being an actor on a set, you know, you have very intimate scenes with people and, like, are, are people going to be really worried about the pr- proximity that they share with other actors? Yeah. How, is that all, how is that whole culture going to basically I work? mean, we have to really have a discussion <coughs> about that here. Yeah. When we start having people come back into our studio, you know, when, how, mm-hmm. uh, how do we do it safely, Yeah. you know? And how do we make people who are coming here feel comfortable yeah. and safe, uh, yeah. protected in yeah. that regard? I mean, people sit at a table right next to each other. Yeah. They handle the same dice. They wear the same headsets. Yeah. How do we make people feel comfortable? How mm. do we do the content that we do? Yeah, safely. Yeah. Responsibly. I mean, just going to the grocery store the other day, you know, like you really, I never, Never really considered it. Like, yeah, you'll wipe down the the grocery cart, you know, just like wipe down the handle so you can push it. And you're like, okay, I feel comfortable. But then you start to think about the people you bump into, the things that you're touching, you know, all the boxes. And like, you're not the only person touching that box. If no. you're touching it and putting it back, a hundred other people are as well. So it's like, oh man, is is like the new, our new world going to be that we go shopping and we're all wearing gloves just to be cautious? Uh, some of the grocery stores you know? in LA make you put gloves on when you go in them. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. We hadn't really got a chance to talk about that with the new rules that the mayor has been putting out. Mm-hmm. You know, in Los Angeles right now, stores won't let you go in them unless you have a mask on. Yeah. And two of the stores Malik and I stopped by over the weekend, they made you put on uh, disposable gloves at the door. And oh they wow. had a sanis- sanitation uh, station. Sanis- sanitization station. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> uh, right next to them. Yeah. So you'd wash your hands first, grab the gloves, and then you could take them off at the end and wash mm-hmm. your hands again. Um, that Vons over on uh, Laurel like yeah, had yeah. like set up the grocery store where it was like one way, this way, down, right. up. Like you yeah. couldn't have two people in an aisle going a certain direction. Mm-hmm. And I think some of those practices are going to be sticking around I think so for too. a while. I really do think so. I mean, I went to Lucifer. So I went to this pizza place down the street from us. And uh, on the door, it said, if you don't have a mask, you can't come in. Mm-hmm. And like, so, I mean, I had a mask and I had gloves. So I walked in. It's They literally just have like a line roped off for just to get pickup orders. And all every single person in there, N95 masks, yep. gloves, yep. and you know. So it I makes me feel good. Oh, for sure. To see everyone following those rules and, yeah. and enforcing them. It yeah. really does. Emily and I have gone to Starbucks a couple times. And at one place, they didn't have gloves. And at one place, they didn't have masks. And I'm like, I'm still trying to like be okay with the mm-hmm. fact that like there's people working there. Because if they're working there, I'm going to assume that they're probably not sick. At the same time, though, I'm like, man, it really made me feel comfortable going into a pizza place, seeing people fully masked in gloves them asking the customers of the same thing because then I'm like, cool, I'm going to get my pizza and I'm not freaked out about eating it, Mm -hmm. you know, especially pizza. It's like such a hands-on thing. Yeah. But yeah, the grocery store thing is very interesting and having everything sort of like segmented, okay, six feet apart and all of the machines for the card swiping thing was all covered up and yeah, I don't know. I'm really curious to see how our culture is going to adapt from this moving forward and if it makes people just more aware of, of that sort of stuff than like, 
think it's better. Yeah. I think for uh, yeah. speaking of this kind of stuff, I don't know if you all been watching the news at all. Uh, they did announce yesterday that you know stimulus checks are going out. Yeah. Um, if you don't have them by Wednesday, tomorrow the government will be putting up, and this is United States, mm -hmm. uh, we'll be putting up a website that you can go to uh, with the IRS and you can check your information, mm -hmm. make sure that your information is correct. Um, I will definitely have to do that because I don't even have a bank account, so I don't know how in the hell I'm supposed to get my my uh, my stimulus um, in that regard. But some people may have gotten it already. They said that most should be out by Friday. Um, we have been working still primarily on the um, paycheck protection plan uh forgiveness loan for small businesses and just kind of updating people on that we still have had no luck uh, i know that you know our president will go on tv and tell everyone everything's working everything's great and it's just not true and when you start talking to other people yeah there are a couple cases of people getting things to go through and things are happening but most of the people we talk to you know just don't believe everything at face value you're gonna have to stick with it you have to kind of keep pushing uh, make sure your voice is heard mm -hmm. and don't buy into the crap. Adam and I had that press conference on down here yesterday and oh it's God. just I like, think we were both ready to kick we were, the TV. We were about to break the TV cause I've never been more, <laughs> so brutal. I've never been more disappointed in my country. And I, and I mean that like, I love my country. I love the liberties that I have mm -hmm. and the, you know, the advantages that I get to partake in because yeah. of where I live. Um, but I hate this idea that we can never demand things be better. Right. I hate that. You could, you, I don't, you know, we should always be striving to be better. That's the That's whole, a whole point. part of life. Yeah. Do better tomorrow than you did today. And, uh, I'm, I'm just very disappointed, you know, like I don't, people are dying Yeah. and I'm getting tired of, us having someone that's supposed to be leading us through it um, just refuse to take any responsibility whatsoever, act like a child, yeah. and, and just – there's just a basic level of human decency that I would expect from our government right now. Look, I never would have thought in a million years that I'd be like, oh, man, Newsom and uh, fucking Garcetti, whoo. United, the United West Coast States of America. I'm here for it. Yeah. And ne before this, I never, like, never. But then you watch the TV and you're just like, my brain hurts. <laughs> it hurts Using so bad. Using a national <laughs> press conference to play Ugh. a piece of propaganda footage from Fox News. Wait, it was a Fox News video from yeah. Hannity. And who is on Trump's, like, re-election team? Like, this is the kind of stuff where I'm just like, what has happened to us? What has happened? How, how do we allow this? And I'm not sitting here. I, it's so easy to start the whataboutism when you start talking about this stuff. Yeah. And people could be like, oh, Democrats are just bad, whatever, whatever, whatever. We have to stop pretending. We have to stop pretending that any career politician would be like this. They, Even if they're crooked, they still at some level respect that they have to follow the rules. Like, I don't think we will see the damage that has been done from this for years. No matter where you fall in the political spectrum, we have someone in our country right now that's supposed to be leading it, proving that a lot of being the president is just tradition. Mm -hmm. And there's not actually rules that hold you to a certain standard. And you can act and do things in a way that blow my mind. I, I've been a huge fan of politics my whole life, and I've been surprised. So many things that I just thought were standard practices that were put in place by some sort of actual oversight were not. They were just us following the traditions that we had put in place and you know trump's kind of shown that it's kind of you can get away with a lot and uh for better or worse now politicians know that too and that they can get away with it and you, we will probably see a democrat president in the next you know 10 years uh do some really shady stuff because they've been taught well we can get away with this shit now. Yeah. There are certain things that we used to not do that now we know, oh, we could probably get away with that. Like damage has been done to our systems, to our trust, to our institutions, to our ability to respond to pandemics. You know, like we have an administration that's the smallest in history because jobs aren't filled. There's just entire branches of our government not filled with positions. They're, they were fired and let go, and then people were never rehired. And it's just empty, and it's it's wild. And I'm so disappointed, and, you know, I applaud uh, people who are trying to do the right thing and standing up and trying to protect this country, 
and um, whose concern are people. People, not what where you fall on the political spectrum. Because yeah. in a crisis, politics should fall away. Yeah, it should fall away. The fact that we have someone who's attacking people who don't praise them in the middle of a pandemic should, in my eyes, be immediately enough to say, sit the fuck down and let somebody else take over. Because you're supposed to represent people, not people who applaud you. Uh, that will forever blow my mind. And I really hope when we get through this, we can start making positive changes uh, for the better. And I hope that we don't get gaslit into oblivion, you know, like we already are. And that was the thing why we wanted to blow that TV up yesterday. It's just like yeah. you're watching in real time <laughs> someone tell you things are different than what you've seen. Yeah. You know, we remember our state being shut down before everything else. <clears throat> we remember being told stay at home and me calling my parents and her saying, well, everyone here thinks it's a hoax because the president mm. said it's a hoax. They want us to keep the brewery open. A full week yeah. went by before the rest of the country responded. In that week, how much damage was done? I mean, the amount of people that got sick in those in that seven day, five, seven days is like, I mean, we see it every day. We see yeah. how many new cases are every single day. And now we have, I think, what is it, over 115,000 yeah, and, uh, and we knew it was going to be bad. Yeah, but don't let but people don't tell like, you yeah. that because it's bad, we don't have a right to critique, and we don't have a right to demand that we do better in the future. That is our fucking mm. right to ask to be better and to do better next time. Don't let people reverse that on you and be like, "Well, we did the best we could." No, we didn't, and we can do better. And mm -hmm. it takes somebody admitting that and understanding their mistakes and pushing forward. And we have to, we have to hold them responsible for those choices and decisions that were made. If we don't, this shit will just keep happening. It will just keep happening. And it will get worse. And we'll just keep getting gaslit into thinking like, oh, well, we did the best we could. We did everything. No, y we didn't. And, you know, yes, lives were saved mm -hmm. when we closed the country down and people started taking the proper steps. But we can say that while also saying more lives could have been saved. It, both things can be true. Both things can be true. Um, we love you all. We really do. Uh, we hope everybody's staying safe through all this. And uh, I, I did want to really quickly, Adam, we had some mm -hmm. tips come in. Um, uh, Parjai tipped and said, this was a tough choice, but I haven't watched Miracle in a while. <laughs> Peak one for Zach's blood pressure. Pay, support, get fixed, then cancel. <laughs> okay, I'll do that right. I'm going to do that while we link a stream, and I'm going to sign up. I'm going to buy that support, and then they're probably going to be like, after I buy the support, I'll get an email that says, due to COVID-19, we are not currently taking Supporting. any support claims, which is probably true because their office is in New York. Oh, God. I didn't think about that. Yeah, that's going to happen. Oh. That's going to happen. Anyway, uh, <laughs> uh, Shadow Uzumaki, the fallout of this event should hopefully force change to occur in society as a whole. Not holding my breath though. Uh, Arsenal Roy for miracle. Arslan, I wonder if I'm eligible for Adam's clubhouse. Probably would take a miracle. Um, I haven't seen fallout also. Hey gang. Thanks. Uh, you all are absolutely amazing. We appreciate you so much and everything Thank you, you do. <clears throat> um, I, I know. And, and I just want to add one thing like in 2016, when Trump was elected, like, we had a meeting as a company. Malika and I have talked about this a lot. Even Mitch and Malika and I have talked about this a lot. We are all what I would consider activists, and we are all people. I'm a very political person. I read so much polit <laughs> political news. I've always been that way. Um, but we made a decision at Hyper years ago, like, we're going to make this be an escape, and we're not going to talk about it. you know. And I also believe if somebody voted for Trump, you don't ban them from the chat room. And I've had, I've literally had people uh leave our channel and not subscribe uh because we said that we would do that like if they voted for trump you can't ban them like that's a right as an american you can disagree with them you can argue but you can't ban somebody for who they voted for i i don't believe in that uh and we've had we've lost members of our community because of that because they disagreed with that choice uh i am still a very firm believer and the only way to make people grow learn and understand is through education and destroying ignorance. And we will never do that by closing the door on everyone. We will never do that. We will just continue to fly in a circle and the world will never grow. So we have to, we have to keep the door open and we have to be willing to share and learn together. And we made that choice. And I know lately in all of this, I've been blown up, comments have been made. <laughs> uh, 
and I might regret it later because I know that it creates a lot of stress in the chat room and I do want this to be an escape. Um, but then I also, and, and I don't want anyone to think that we take these things lightly. I've had long all night discussions with Malika where we've had very heart to heart. Like we feel like we have an audience so we have a responsibility. And if we're not using our responsibility to help change the world for the positive, are we making a mistake? And ultimately we came to the, the idea that if we show love and support of each other and our friends and new people, that will fundamentally help grow the world differently because there's an entire individual whose values don't align with that. Trump's values do not align with that. So if we're just showing this, this way of life, we're hopefully making a positive change without getting political because decency and ethics and morals should not be political. Those should just be good human traits. Uh, but that was the decision we made, and I know that I've been faulting on that lately, and I apologize. I know we said we wouldn't talk politics on this channel. Uh, I'm just fucking angry. I'm angry. I'm just so, so angry. And I don't know what to do with that anger. I just, I, I really don't. Just don't kick our TV. I won't. I won't do that. Or me. <laughs> I might do that. <laughs> Shit. I might do that. Um, but I... I'm angry and I'm sorry that I, I put that anger out there, especially because I do feel like I have a responsibility to uh, be careful with what I say as a person who has an audience. I really believe in that. Um, but I, I, I want us to get through this as a country, as a world. Yeah. And that's the other thing. Like we have a worldwide audience and we talk, Malika and I talk about that a lot too, of like world. <laughs> We're not all unethical pieces of shit. Yeah. Ethics is really important to some of us. Yeah. And we make decisions for our business based on those ethics. There are more things important than profit and and the stock market. We truly believe that. So, yeah. I'm just mad, dude. <laughs> it's it's sometimes it makes me really sad when I get messages from my international friends who are like, "Man, what is happening in your country?" and I'm like, "Hey man, we're trying our best one day at a time." One day at a time, we're doing everything we can to not be angry about everything that goes on. Yeah. But, you know, you got to do the best that you can. And, again, I think we're really lucky. We have an amazing community of people that we can turn to every day. You know, you support us. We support you. We do the best that we can to, you know, make this an amazing escape for people. And it's an escape for us as well. Yeah, it is. Know? It is. And we wouldn't be able to get through it without you. Yeah. I, I know I've said this many times, and I'm preaching to the choir at this point. Uh, but I, I think it, it should be repeated and that you are just as important to us as we are to you. And I, it helps me get through every day to know that there are people watching from all over the world, sharing their experiences, sharing their good hearts, and that we as a community um, can have a positive influence on the world and each other. It really helps me get through this. When I turn on the news and I, I, I see that much bullshit and, and, and hatred and lack of ethical values being portrayed on a worldwide stage it hurts me to the core and i appreciate you all so much for reminding me every single day um that's not the representation of the world you know it's just an idiot that we got to get through yeah uh and it's not a representation of the world i know so thank you all and um, with that. i'm not gonna read uber baldy's tip he can go fuck himself <laughs> oh, <God. laughs>